the Lord. God said, Did not he, the Lord, make husband and wife one? So basically scripture is simply saying that why God brought two people together to husband and wife. God said, the reason why I brought two and made them one brought together it is because I am seeking I am looking for what? The seed or godly seeds. In which it is not God's will for God to have children. In the covenant of which it is not the Lord's will that will be barren. Because this is the word of the Lord. Of why he brought two people together in the court of marriage. If this is the reason of it, then we're going to have to be very careful in how we deal with the gender the law has given us. And not Our life with unnecessary things that ought to be fine. Avoiding the purpose of God, our lives. Our life. The Lord said, I'm seeking for godly seed. Who is giving this seed? It is the Lord. He said, The children are of God. Children are not of the devil. Children are what? The gift of God. God gives you. He said, once given you this, you have a responsibility upon your head in this matter. You have responsibility to bring up this friend in the notch, in the feet of the God. Train of the child. So when you go, do not that in the presence of the living the child to God's way. So when the child goes, train him in Lord's way. He cannot go straight. It is the responsibility of the parents to block this thing that God gives you. Almighty God will stand of the Lord in the that is the Lord at least our life. We have to be so hard real with the things that we so be with. In all of our services on Lord, we have to be very careful in the order of the service of life. The order of our services in life in other words, how we are living lives have to be sensitive to priorities and not fail. This is the order that the Lord requires. That number one, we see God as the ultimate priority of life. God. Number two, after God, is the thing. Number two, after God is what is the family. Then number three, the church or the ministry. Do not be the church or your ministry second position and being that you are fulfilling 
that which the Lord called you to do. Great mouth, great woman of God, let your home stop. The Lord just tells that you can occupy any position in the church. You can't know body. So you can tell family is right the God in priorities of life. Listen to what told Noah in Genesis 8. Let me read two verses, 15 and 16. When the Lord wanted to destroy the land, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the sight of Almighty God. And this is what God said. God spoke unto Noah, verse 15, Genesis 8, saying, Noah, go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wife with thee. That is the family of Noah. Noah you are going into the ark because you have found favor in my sight and because you train your children to know me. They are coming. They are godly, so they took godly wives. The wives are also coming. That is how the whole family was actually saved. Made it to the ark. So the Lord is expecting us, all of us, not to come by yourself as a father, not to come by yourself as a mother, but as parents, we bring everyone in the family. If the sons of Noah had children, the Lord would have asked them to go in too. Because they would have trained these kids According to the training that they received from the father Noah. And you are all coming in. It is symbolic that we cannot go without our children. And that is what the enemy wants. Moses, you can go and worship your God. Leave the children behind. We will not go until we are going with our children. If the children are not going with us, then what? The enemy knows that if he has gotten hold of the children, he had finished you. That's a fact. That is why leave the children behind. Go do whatever that you do. He knows that you shall surely come back because of the love that we have for our children. He knows that. The Lord wants us to bring all of them in. In Genesis 25, verse 27 and 28, Genesis 25, verse 27 and 28, this is talking about a father called Isaac in his relation to his children. These boys, they grew. That was Esau and Jacob. And Esau was a Canaan hunter. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Dwelling in tents. And Isaac the father loved Esau. Isaac the father he loved Esau. The reason of this love is because Esau will be bringing food. So Isaac did eat Esau's, Esau's food constantly and he delights in the food. 
He said, because he did it of his venison. So he's a man of hunter. A man of hunting. He goes and bring forth bush meat with soup, pepper soup. And Isaac loved it. And because of that, he had developed a special love for Esau. Please, in the case of Isaac, it was bush meat. In your case, it might be something else. But the word is telling us here that as much as Isaac loved Esau, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, she loved Jacob. So you can see right there in the house, the father has his preferred and the mother also has her preferred. In the same house, what do you think will happen? Children, they are very sensitive. If you are going to develop partiality in the midst of your children, you might lose all of them, by the way. You might lose all of them. That is the last thing you want to do. They are so sensitive. Be careful not to bring forth any form of partiality or start showing, uh, I love this one more than you. In the case of Isaac and Rebecca, it was very clear. Very, very clear. Maybe one of your children is smarter than the rest of them. And you are considering the other ones that are not smart as failures. Be careful. Be very careful because there is a factor called time. And God is not stupid to be giving you children and making one smart and the others not. But it is because one might have probably academic excellencies. And the other, other one or others might not have. But they might have something else that you do not know. There is no child that is put here that God doesn't have a plan for that child. And if God had taken time to bring forth a plan for a child, you just have to know that it is good. Because he's a good God and everything that comes from him is all good. So don't be hasty in judging and bringing forth partiality among your children. One is not coming up as fast as the others. Or maybe one is totally standing out. But please, do not bring forth any form of division among the children. Otherwise, you know, they will grow with that in mind. And your home shall be fire. Fire. The children are not in agreement. It will catch you up at the time that you don't have the strength to control it. So for Isaac, pepper soup. For you, it might be something else that you have seen in one of the child. Or you have seen in some of the children. And probably one does not have anything. And you wonder if this one is of, of, from you or of you. So every time that this one, and he knows that your love to him is not like the other one or the others. And just growing down in confidence. Growing down in confidence. Mommy doesn't love me. Daddy hates me. What do you think this child will become outside? We know what outside reserved for them. When we are hit by outside, we run home. What about when we are running home and we know that there is fire in home? That is the reason why any useless boyfriend, any useless boy out there that will show little love to that daughter of yours, she will go. Because there is no love. 
assuring that child that she is okay. These are some of the little, little things that once you see that your child is now mangling with useless somebody, then you start a fight. Let's deal with the foundation so that we don't find this type of problems ahead of us. We are to show our children all love that we can. Look at you. Standing in your home and dividing the children. If God was to look at us and be saying that you don't have this, you are not this, and the Lord is bringing forth partiality. He said God is not partial. He regarded not man. He despised nobody. He placed all of us in the same level. Read Deuteronomy 28 from verse 12 going. You will see. He said, I am the Lord. The God of all gods. He said, the God of gods and the Lord of lords. The heaven of the heavens of heaven belong to me. Also the earth. And everything that is in there, I am not a partial God. Mighty in my ways. Terrible God that I am. Watch in the way that you treat that which I have given you. This is what the Lord required of you. That you may have the fear of the Lord to train your children to fear him. And not bring in your little, little carnal mind to start judging these kids. Because Jacob saw something of his father Isaac. Look at when Jacob also grew up in Genesis 37 verse 3 to 4. We are reading that now Israel also called Jacob when he grew, he loved his son, Joseph. He loved his son, Joseph, more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved Jacob, I mean Joseph, more than all of them, they hated Joseph even more and could not speak peaceably unto him. Hallelujah. This is it. Watch what you buy for these kids. What you are giving to this one and what you are giving to that one. You might be thinking that the children are not watching. They are watching. This little boy of, man, of mine, one year old, when he put on, the mother would dress him and he would come and stand in front of me and looking at me. He wants me to comment. He's looking for me to what? To give my comment. And I'll be looking at him and say, Hey, Kweku, this shoe of yours, they are not small. And look at this jacket you have. Wow. And you have to see the countenance of this boy. Full of love and smile. Daddy said that I am looking very good this morning. That will run. In the mind of this little boy the whole day until another cloth shall be changed. These are children. If you are taking these things for granted, that you give this one that one and you are giving me this one. He said that Jacob loved Joseph because he had Joseph in his old age. So he made a special coat of many colors and gave it to Joseph. So when Joseph is coming, Joseph is shining, brightening among his brethren. He has many colors. And the brothers are, said they hated him because of that coat. You might not understand why the children are fighting among themselves. Your mind will not even be there. They might not even tell you. But among themselves, uh -huh. we know that you have, daddy had always preferred you anyway. That is a big statement. Too. Big statement.
We have to learn to stand for our children, loving them. To what extent? Let me give you a story, a true story that Jesus told. And we will stop just right here. The book of Matthew, Matthew 15. The story ran from verse 21 to 28. 21 says that Jesus Christ went thence and departed into a coast of Tyre and Sidon. So he came to the coast of Tyre, the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and in that place, behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Jesus, saying, Jesus, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So over here, you are seeing the love of a mother toward a daughter. What is this woman's problem? The woman's issue is that the daughter is possessed. The daughter, the enemy had gripped the daughter. And she's running after Jesus, seeking for help. Say, help me, have mercy. Not myself, my daughter. So then, Jesus, hearing that, in verse 23, Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought Jesus, saying, Please, Master, send this woman away, for she cried after us. Watch what is happening here. Jesus Christ heard the woman saying, Help me, my daughter. The enemy has gotten hold of my daughter. But the Lord will not say a word. Not even a single word from the mouth of Jesus Christ. This is very symbolic. That number one, we have to learn to stand for our children. We have to learn to what? To stand for our children. If you are going to have the attitude of, okay, I talked to you, I told you, and you didn't listen. So now where you are, you are going to pay the price. It's not going to be well with you. This is not the attitude that God wants us to have towards our children. The Lord wants us to be able to come before him when something has gone wrong, that the enemy had come in and gotten hold of your children. You have to learn how to go and cry before Almighty God. Any parent that do not know this principle, the enemy will take away your children and will finish you. Will finish you. Because after your children, he's coming after you. As much as you think you don't care of that child's life. Let me tell you, it is not about the physical things that the child has done that you probably hate that child so much. But it is because you are bound by a covenant which is of God. He said he brought you together to, for his seek for a godly seed. The Lord has a plan concerning this child's life. So you are adonkerism physically. You will pay spiritually in the sight of almighty God. It's a fact. It's a fact. So we have to learn eh, your children will always be your children as far as you are alive. If you are going to say, oh, yeah, now they are grown up. No. God does not see grown up children. Your children is what? Your children. Your children are your children. And the Lord will see. Matter of fact, even we human beings, we see our children to be our children no matter how old they are. Eh? 
when something has gone wrong, nobody can talk to me the way that my mom will talk to me. She has your history. She has your history. Only one. She can bring you just only one history. One story of your life. And if you are smart, that one will humble you. Just one. So we have to learn to stand for them in their marriages when they are facing difficulties. Did you hear me what I said? In their marriages, we are standing for them, we are standing for their, for their seed seeds. Generations to come. This is the family that the Lord has given you. If Noah had thousand grand sons and daughters, the Lord would have brought all of them in in only one condition that they are trained unto his glory. All of them. He said, Noah, you found grace. You found favor in my sight. You are coming in with your seed. The woman cried. My daughter, Lord, have mercy. Devil had entered. Devil wants to possess my daughter. Devil wants, he wants to take away my son. Help me. Jesus not saying anything. Disciples coming around and be telling Jesus, Jesus, send this woman away. You know what it means? Symbolically, it is the difficulties, the opposition that you will be encountering as you are trying to call upon the name of the Lord. Even that, Jesus opened his mouth after the disciples telling him to send this woman away. He answered the woman and said, Woman, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus simply saying that you don't qualify for me to help you. This is when everything is standing in your face that your child is not worthy for you to redeem her, him or her. This is the situation that circumstances are going to work against you. Trying to. Let me give you a clear example. Let's say your child is at school and this son of yours is not doing very well. So as much as you are trying, probably giving, you know, uh, private uh, tuition and, and studies and everything else, and uh, this boy is still not making it. Don't let that boy go. Amen. Don't. Amen. Don't. The teachers might be discouraging you, say, oh, this one. The attitude of the boy or the girl herself will even discourage you. Your child cannot make it to this school. He is not smart enough. But the woman is saying that I know that he is not smart. But it is not a child that I purpose to have my, myself. He or she was given to me by God. And God has a plan for this child. So I will still call upon the name of the Lord for this child's life. To see that which the Lord has given this child. This is the opposition we are talking about. You know what this, you know, the, the woman addressed to Jesus. Yet the disciples, they came and told Jesus, send this woman away. You know why? Because the woman was persistent. Have mercy. Send her away because she cried after us. As much as opposition shall come in the life of these children, parents must learn to stand and save the life of their children. How can you be here in this life? Your children are messed up out there and you sit down eating 
said, I, 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 I am joyful. America is good. Seriously? What is it that is good? The food or your sorrow that you are covering? You have to be sensitive. You came to this land of America and your children are now astray. The enemy has gotten hold of them. And you are still talking about what, what, what is it that is good? You have, you are failing in the sight of Almighty God and the Lord is going to ask you. This is going to be part of your judgment. What did you do with the children that I gave you? Do you know that some, some are crying before the Lord to have children? To have children. Even just one. But look at you. Every time you turn around, a baby is born. And you are standing there saying, my family, we are fertile. You better watch you and take care of these kids. Somebody is crying just to have one. If this one is not listening, it's okay. I have four more. So he can be in prison, I will be okay. How can you be okay? You can't. No matter what, this woman must stand and continue. Even Jesus telling her, you are not entitled to receive help for these kids. Yet, in verse 25 and 26 of Matthew 15. This is what the woman did when she heard that she's not entitled to receive help from Christ. He said, then came the woman and worshipped Jesus saying, Lord, help me. But Jesus answered and said, Woman, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Seriously? It is not meat to take children's bread and cast it to dogs. So basically, the Lord is simply saying that healing is children's bread. That is one. Number two, this woman, Jesus said, if I give you this food, this bread, it's like me giving to a dog. That is the Jesus that we serve, talking that way. So is the Lord insulting this woman? No, the Lord is not insulting this woman. This story here, it is there as a principle for us to learn. The Lord is, remember where this woman is coming from. The woman said, devil has taken over my child. The devil has taken over my child. Then when the woman heard the story of dogs, then she said to Jesus, Jesus, you are right. He said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. <laughs> this is something else. This one, it is to tell you that if you are going to be proud and protecting your honor in the society, your children will perish. You will lose that which is precious from this marriage that you went through or from this marriage that you are in. The Lord is requiring you of bringing these kids unto him. So I am ready to do anything. Basically, that's what the woman was saying. Call me dog. Let that which falls for the dogs come to me as a dog. And I'll be okay. You name it. 
we are to go to any extent to save our children. And you have to see where the principle is really going. It's all toward God. Don't cease to pray over this child's life, this children's life. Going before the Lord and waging war. Your child marriage is not going well. Your children are not doing well. From one problem to another. You have to stand and call upon the name of the living God. For the enemy is trying to get you. He's trying to get you. Passing through the children. Oh, that is his life. It is not his life. It is your life. Your life. Call me dog. Call me anything that you want to call me. I cannot let my child go. Period. We can't leave our children behind. Pharaoh said, go. Take everything you want to take. Leave the children behind. He said, we can't. We can't. We have to go with our children, not only with our children, but also with everything that we have been able to gain here on this land. We are going with everything. We are going with everything. Look at them. They don't, some, they don't even speak our language. Some of these kids that we have them here, they, don't, they speak English. But yet, see what the devil is trying to do. See what the devil is what trying to do. They said, you came here illegally. One must be sensitive, you know, to the things that are precious in the sight of almighty God. And now that you are 18, if you are going to do this, they say, go, go, go out. Out of my house. Listen to you. You are sending yourself away. You are sending yourself away. The woman came and worshipped Jesus. Let me be a dog and save my child. In verse 28 of Matthew 15, he said, Then Jesus, hearing everything that this woman said, Jesus said unto her, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Great is what? Thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The moment that Jesus released it, the daughter was made whole. Oh woman, thou hast great faith. You see, most of the time you come around, oh Lord, this year, increase my faith. Increase my faith. I am giving you the solution of one thing that will never fail in your life. To receive the great faith from God. That is to learn standing for your children. Endure the hardship of the situations that they might bring on your way. But remember, the enemy is behind it. So if you, don't, you are not paying attention, you will only see your children messing up your life. You are not seeing the devil. See the devil and get hold of your children. See the devil and get hold of the children. They are looking for them. They are looking for them. You watch on social media. They are looking for your children. They are looking to train them for you. So if you are not sensitive enough and you are going to be shouting and 
fighting in the house. And I said, you are now 18, go. I wish God would tell you to go when you were 18. But yet, we messed up many, 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 many ways. He keeps showing us that great love. Anyone that is not sensitive to this kingdom principle, you are only, not only going to lose your children, but you will lose your life. You will lose your life. It is, it's a package. When the Lord wanted to save Noah, he said, you are coming in with your children. Fight over their lives. When is this going to stop? It will stop only when you die. It will stop only when you die. I heard a story yesterday and I was marveled. Somebody said, he knows a woman who was smoker, heavy smoker. She will be smoking, smoking, smoking. And has a little, a little boy, a little son. And one day, as the woman was smoking, 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 the son looked at the mama and told her, Mommy, you know this commercial that I'm seeing at the TV? About this smoke, look at me. All this time you have been taking care of me. When I grow, I am also going to take care of you. But what about if you are killed by this smoke? Can I take care of you? The woman simply quit smoking. She what? She quit smoking. If you train these kids God's way, the responsibility is also placed upon them to love you. To love you. Just dump your parents in the nursing home and you have been torn in my flesh. Go and see back home in the village. Where we come from, we don't dump the parents. So. We don't dump them. It's even, it's, mama is still alive. Grandma is still alive. And the little ones, they enjoy. <laughs> That's what life is all about. So watch. It is two-edged sword. That is the word of God. You don't care about them. Most likely, you might end up in nursing home. With children not coming around. So our love to our kids it has to be without any form of condition. Unconditional love. It's part of the covenant. It's part of the covenant of marriage. The woman was selfless. Call me dog. Call me anything. Let me go through the hardship of the land of America. But I have to make sure that my children shall stand. Then what is the purpose of this trip journey that I made to this land? What type of life do you want me to present out there? The country where I come from, they don't ask you of how many houses you have. If you are prosperous, they are looking to see your children. God is looking for the same thing. The same thing. So everyone and each one of us must understand we are here in this land. 
where so much is going on. Be sensitive to what the enemy is doing and not hand over that which is precious in the sight of Almighty God to the devil. You lose them, you have lost everything. 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 This is it. May the Lord help us. May the Lord be mighty with us. Strengthen our hearts to fulfill that which he had called us to do. God bless you. God bless you and we thank God for everyone and each one of you. We have a message from the living God that we titled The Three Things About Faith. The Three Things About Faith. Hebrews 11 and the verse is 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We are here living and the whole purpose of our lives is to make sure that we are pleased in the sight of God so that God can receive us. He said, in order for our lives to please God, we must believe in God. We must know that God is God. And there is a reward as we seek him and as we come to know him. Romans 1 and the verses 16 to 17. He said, For therein, which is the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The children of God justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, they shall live by faith. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. When you couple these three scriptures, it is faith, it is essential to save God. Faith, it is essential to live and please God. Faith, it is essential to be moving up, stepping up in whatever area of your life. Last week, we talked about how we need to live a life that is taking us from faith to faith. Through the preaching of the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed through the preaching of the gospel and it is meant to take you from one level of faith to another level. Coming up higher and higher. Being increased in faith. Coming closer and closer to God because the word is meant to draw you closer to almighty God. So closer you get to know Jesus, higher your faith stands. So we said that we are going to see three things about faith. Number one, we said faith is confidence in God. Faith, it is confidence in God. We're going to use the example of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15 and the verse is 5. And six, he said, 
for 90 years. Abraham was already 90 years old. And this man did not even have a single child. The wife, 10 years less, 80 years old. So when you look at the physical aspect of things, human body is not capable to bring forth at that age. But because this man is called and he has been working with Almighty God, putting his faith in him, a time came that the Lord brought Abraham. So, Genesis 15, 5 to 6, he said, God brought Abraham forth abroad and said, Abraham, look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And Abraham said unto God, So shall thy seed be, that is what God told Abraham. Look unto these stars and see if you can number them. Abraham, I know you don't have any child at this point. But this is my word to you. As you see these stars, so shall thy seed be. Abraham heard it and he believed in the Lord. And God counted it to him for righteousness. God counted it to him for righteousness. 90 years old, 80 years woman on my side, when there was strength to conceive, nothing happened. And he was still walking with this God. But at this point, when everything has been given up, the body testifies that it is not possible. But the Lord spoke a word in this man's life. And he believed. He believed. He believed. Why did he believe? Romans 4 and the verses 20 and 21. He said, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. This is so wonderful. Abraham, walking with God, the Lord spoke a word, made a promise unto him. Abraham did not look unto his physical body, neither Sarah's womb. But Abraham looked unto God. He looked unto the word that proceeded out of the mouth of the living God. And he came to find out that indeed, man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. God has spoken. This God is able to bring forth what he said he is going to do. He didn't look onto the situations, but he was persuaded that God who had made the promise is able to perform that promise. He was persuaded that God who had made the promise was able to fulfill that promise. Which way? Because of the power. Because of who God is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of they that diligently seeking him. They that diligently seeking him in faith. They that diligently seeking him walking with this God in faith. Walking with this God not in unbelief but walking with this God. Believing that the word of the living God cannot and will not fail in your life. This is what the word of God. Abraham could not see anything of what is going on around him. He could only hear the word of God and know the power, trust in the power, trust in the ability, trust in his potential because, and he's right. 
God speaks. God is not a man. He told us, he said, I am not a man to lie. He doesn't lie. He does not see the way that man sees. He does not. He sees the spirit, the heart of a man. That is what Almighty God sees. So man cannot see the way that God sees. Therefore, it would take the spirit of God in a man to come up higher to believe in this spirit, which is the Holy Ghost that has spoken into his life and know that indeed, I have to know that is God that have spoken and not the word of a man. When a man is making a journey with the Lord, you are meant not to be looking onto what people are going to say. You are not even meant to be looking onto the situation itself, but be looking onto the one who made that promise that he's going to take you there. Because if he said it, he said it in his possibilities. If he said it, he said it in his power. God speaks in his potentials. God, almighty God, will not say something that he cannot do. Because he is the I am that I am. When he says it, it is established. Matter of fact, because you are existing... The Lord God only revealed to you what he had already planted in your life. So the word of God that comes to you is a word that is already established. It is only belonging to the man that is working with God to know that I am not working with man, but I am working with God. And if I am working with God, whatever that the Lord has spoken to my ears, to my heart, it shall surely come to pass. So in Hebrews 6 and the verses 4, 15, he said, So after Abraham, Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So you can see that it's not just believing, it's not just faith. Faith has to be coupled with endurance. Faith has to be coupled with patience. And then you will definitely see the promise of the Lord being established in your life. Very important. Endurance. It means that something is going to shake the word that God has given you. Endurance. It means that something is going to come as a tribulation in the environment. But you still have to see God. Patiently. In meaning that you're going to be seeing others running faster than you. You still have to wait upon the living God. Endurance and patience. You will be tormented. You will be afflicted. You will be going through tough times. Jesus Christ in John 16.33, he said, In me, you will have peace. But in the world, ye shall have tribulation. Tribulations are part of the Promises of Almighty God to bring forth that that the Lord is going to do in your life. Jesus said it, that in the world you will have tribulation. It's a word of God. It's a word of God. But the Lord said that if I have spoken it, it shall surely come to pass. If I have spoken it, it shall surely come to pass. So the only one that can, you know, stop the word of the living God being performed in your life is yourself. It is yourself. What you don't want, God will not do it for you. What you don't want, God will not do it for you. But if God has spoken that word in your life, and it has come to be settled as the word of God, not the word of man. The word of man, anything can blow it out. But if it's the word of God, God watches over his word to see it being performed. He watches over his word. He watches over his word. He watches over the word to, you know, in power, in grace, no matter what they will do as far as you continue looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of that faith. You see that? That Hebrews 12, 2 that we read, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So the author of the word of promise and the finisher to bring to, to, to bring to be established and to bring to be performance. 
the word of promise. That is him. Uh, there is a scripture. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 24. He said that faithful is he who called you. He also will do it. Faithful is he who called you. So the one who made you to make the step. He is the one that is also going to take you through all this. Abraham endured the situation. The Lord's promise has come. You're going to face persecutions. You're going to face trials. You're going to go through tough times. But it is your faith has to be coupled with endurance and patience and setting your eyes. Not, you know, disturbance and distraction are not allowed when you want to see the plan and the purpose and the promise of God to come to be established in your life. The enemy will fight you from every corner and anything is allowed to be used. Jesus, we said it, that he said in this world, you will have tribulation. But the tribulation is not going to overshadow your life. Tribulations are not going to overcome you in only one condition that you stay in Christ. In me, you will have peace. Storm will be going around you, all around. 10,000 is falling here. 1,000 is falling there. But thy dwelling, which is in Christ, is not being shaken. When people are saying that it is tough, things not, there is a casting down, you shall say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. Why? Because we are not dwelling in the same place. We are not dwelling in the same place. So it will come what is killing others. When it comes to you, it is only going to strengthen you. What is not people, you know, what I, I, I'm, I'm making people giving up. When it comes to you, because of faith, endurance, and patience, and patience, you will definitely see it to come to pass. Thank you, Lord. So, in 2 Corinthians, chapter 1 and the verse is 20, the word of God says, he said, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yea. Yea meaning yes. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are all yes. They are all yes. And in him, amen. Amen meaning it will be so. It will be so. So, <laughs> this unto the glory of God by us. I love that one. Unto the glory of God by us. The promise that God made to you. That he will bring you to that expected end. The Lord wants to see you at that expected end for him to take glory. I have already been saying that God delights seeing his children being prospered. God delights seeing his children doing well. God is not a wicked God to see you going through in all situations that are crushing you and standing there and taking joy. No, the Lord said that. Yes, situations that could crush you will come on your way. But I, the Lord, I am with you. When you are going through waters, I will be with you. When you are going through fire, I will be with you. I, the Lord, I will take you out of the hand of the enemy and you will step over near your necks and what I said I'm going to do with you, you shall surely live in only one condition, believe it in me and see it coming to pass. Unless you don't want it. But God delights to see us fulfilling what he wants for us and to take his glory. And to take his glory. So, the word of the living God, all the promises in Jesus, they are yea and amen. It is yes, which is already signed by heaven. Heaven is giving you that check. But a check that is given by heaven. If through faith, you have to turn that check, the back of the check, and sign it and say, Amen. It shall surely come to pass. So shall it be. That is faith. Heaven will never reject any check that is signed by Jesus Christ. And your situation can never be the same. It is impossible. Why? God is... He said, he, he is the word. And the word, it is settled. Nobody shakes God. Said, I am that I am. What is your name? I am 
Tell them that my name is I am that I am. Go and define it. Go and tell. Try and trace the, 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 the family tree. I am that I am. So, you can see that it is not our responsibility to be looking for faith, you know, uh, inside us. We have to look for faith in the promise of God. Some people are talking, say that, oh, if only I can have, if only I can have, I can have faith. I can have faith in trusting that the Lord is going to give me this. No, you have to have that faith in the word, the promise. If God, had God made a promise concerning that situation that this is what he's going to do for you. I have faith that this year is a year of my breakthrough. I have faith that this year is a year of my abundance. I have faith that this year I'm going to be a millionaire. It's, it is, is this a word from the living God? It is a reminder that the Lord has spoken to you that this is what I am bringing to pass in your life. And standing on it and said, oh, I have faith. No, you have to have that faith according to the Rima word. According to what the Lord God had given you. The word that is written. If it's a promise from the Bible and you are standing on there, faithful is the Lord that spoke his word. And he shall surely bring it to pass as you trust him and believe him. And you are going, you will know, you will know. If it is really from a word, a word from the living God, you want to see that the word is going to be attacked. The word is going to face persecution. The word is going to face trials. That is how you will know that indeed your God has spoken. Indeed, your God has spoken. Because the word will prove itself. Every single time that they will come against that word of God in your life, the Lord will stand for his word. And you will be seeing that you are facing situations, but one way or another, you are still moving. They want to crush you, but you, they cannot, and you are still moving. They are wondering how you are moving with all that they are doing, but one way or another, the Lord is moving you. If it is a word from God, heaven will overshadow your environment. Heaven will empower you. Heaven will protect you. Heaven will secure your environment. Heaven will keep you going. The enemy might be rejoicing every time that there is a hate in your life. But let me tell you, that hate is not meant to stop you. Because you have become an unstoppable man. Because a man that has received the word of the living God is not the same man anymore. That man is walking with God. That man, his eyes is open onto something that is not physical. He can see what you cannot see. So what you are doing physically to stop him is not something that is going to work. Because it is the spiritual aspect that triggers the physical. This is the word of the living God. The word of the living God. So, in Hebrews 6, and the verse is 12. We are advised to have the same attitude as Abraham. The word says that, Ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Followers of them, through faith and patience, they inherit the promises. So now, we have come to at least see one aspect of these three things that we are going to see. We said that faith, number one, is confidence in God. Confidence in God. He is faithful who had given his word. He promised he would definitely bring it to pass. We have said it all in this. The endurance, there is time notion in there. Patience. Time notion also in there. So when is it coming to pass? It is not your time. It is the time of the promise. It is the time of the promise. So number two, 
We said faith is dependence upon God. One, faith is confidence in God. Two, faith is dependence upon God. We're going to see the reason why God drove Adam and Eve away from the garden. Genesis chapter 3 and the verses 5. He said, God, Satan is the one that came to them, to Adam and Eve, and spoke to Eve. He said, God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that Satan will come to you and tell you, if only you can come to find out, you can come to knowledge, then you will be like God. You will be able to establish, to bring to pass. Uh, if you just let go, you might not catch it. But here, why is it that the moment that they heard, Adam and Eve heard, that they are going to be like God. Then they were caught into the devil's trick. And they sinned against their God. Simply because. They just. Want to be. Totally independent from God. You want to be like God. Then you don't depend on God anymore. You yourself is God. You yourself is God. So, this is something that is extremely important. The moment that man is coming to, you know, to accept, to know, you know, good and evil, it is something that man is just trying to isolate himself and say that, you know what, I know this. I can do it by myself. I can make it happen. I know what to do. I know the right thing to do. I know the way to take. That is independency from God. But if you will have faith and you are depending on God, you depend on his leading, the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Your knowledge does not count because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. You're, you do not have enough insight to be by yourself, but this is what most people are also, you know, they are caught into this. The devil's same trick that is bringing people to fall. He wants you to know that you are sufficient. That you don't need God. You do need God. The Lord made that promise. Maybe you have a lot of qualification and you said that, oh yes, I know I can make it. And So you are totally going to depend on your personal intellect. It is not going to work. So if you depend on yourself, you will surely die. But if you depend on God, you shall live. If you depend on yourself, you will die as Adam and Eve died. But if you depend on God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, life shall come to you and you shall surely live. Jesus Christ in John 15 and the verses 5, he said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, ye can do nothing. It is important for a child of God to recognize his position of strength. It is important for a child of God to recognize his position of resource. It is important so that you don't move out of your position of strength for the enemy to get you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You are not even by yourself. You come to be part of this body. You are just a branch that must also supply. But the branch that is receiving its nourishment from the vine. So, Christ will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. He will supply when you need security. 
He will supply the needs according to the word that has been given. The promise of God. So, once we come to understand that, we cannot do it by ourselves. But with God, all things are possible. Everything that God has said that you will become, you will definitely become, no matter how much the enemy will try to oppose your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Without me, you can do nothing. A branch, indeed, we said it. So, faith is total dependency on God. If you choose the good because you think that that is the right thing for you, you will definitely miss the best or even the excellent from God. Sometimes we really, we look onto the situation and we see that, oh, okay, this one, no problem, I can handle it. There is a problem, you cannot handle it. The enemy is showing you something that looks like you can handle it. It will take God's power to overcome that situation. So, you can obtain something that is good, but it is not what the Lord has for you. The Lord has something that is best, something that is excellent. So, as you depend on him, on you, patiently, and wait to see what the Lord God had in store for your life. Uh, there is another thing here. As you depend on God, the book of Habakkuk, because there is a hindrance to faith, which is pride. A hindrance to faith, which is pride. So, Habakkuk, chapter 2 and the verse is 4. He said, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in God. A soul that is lifted up is not upright in God. Because we said it, that the just shall live by faith. So this scripture here, the just shall live by faith, is quoted at least in three. We saw it. There is one in, in Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38. It's talking about the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If you live by sight, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. But if you are one that has been justified by God, definitely you must be living by faith. And through faith, the promises of God, through faith, that project will come to be established. Through faith, the Lord will do it. Through faith, the persecutions and the trials and everything that they will try to just keep you on the same spot. It's just, you know, you are there. It seems like you are at the same spot. You know what? It's your time of endurance. It is your time of patience. But when it is God's time for you to move, nothing that keeps you on the bandage Nothing that has been holding you for all this while can ever keep you at that same spot. Your responsibility. Be humble to the word that has come to you. Uh, proud people, people that are so proud, they don't have faith. The proud, they don't have faith. Said like the soul that is lifted. It's not upright in the sight of God. Because they think they can do it by themselves. Yeah. So, the pride do not have faith because they cannot humble themselves for the Lord to walk with them. And God resists the proud. Automatically, there is no way that the word of the living God can be performed in your life because you are not in line with the word. You are above the word. If I can be God myself, what do I need God for? These are the proud ones. You know, when you look at, uh, you compare people like the Roman centurion. This is in Matthew 8, 5. This Roman centurion came and uh, <laughs> coming in Believing that Jesus can heal the servant that is sick. Jesus said, let me come with you. He said, no, 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 no. no. Your word alone is enough. Your word alone is enough. Please release the word and I know that it shall be accomplished. That is faith. He had faith in the word of Christ. Meanwhile, the other side you have the Pharisees. Because of much pride. 
because of their knowledge of Bible, they be even become the enemies of Christ. They were fighting every single thing that Christ would say. They see themselves as so righteous and knowing so much God and taking glory of God upon themselves. But the one who has been coming to God and knowing that God is God is the one that sets everything that he does into the power in the goodness. He depends. He has confidence in God. He depends on God that the Lord God who has spoken is definitely going to do it. So that hindrance of pride is something that we have to take it out. Many are missing the assignment of God because of pride. Pride cannot allow you to wait. I am now ready. God will tell you when you are ready. When you have gone through this ah, these situations of trials and all that, how can I, me, myself, how can I be waiting not that long and how can I be going through this, 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 this things? Have you not seen me? How can I be taking this situation? If you cannot come down, I mean, when the Lord had made a promise to take you there, you will come, <clears throat> sorry, you will come to God, the Lord will break you. The Lord will take you through school. You have to graduate by taking every single class. Every single class in, this, in the school of God before you come out. So if you are not humbled, if you are not someone who is you know, living his life with the spirit of humility, you will not get there. Man can make you what you desire. But whatsoever that man make it, it is not established as God will do it. Because man is made. But God, who is the creator of it all, when he had done it, it is established. He said, whatsoever that the Lord doeth, it is good. It is good. So, the humility aspect of it is essential. Your achievement cannot bring you to a, a, a level that God cannot use you anymore. He takes you from one degree of glory to another. One degree of faith to another. So, if you are proud, ha, huh, I used to have a, a PhD in my country. How can I be coming to America and be driving taxi? How can I be coming to America and be driving taxi? So the, your wife is just working herself out. She's going out of strength. When you cross your leg, sitting down at home, when she's at work so much, and you cross your leg, you come down to just dressing and moving around with your PhD that is not helping nobody. The Lord wants to use you. You are in a new place now. You are in America. Your PhD, maybe God wants to take you higher. You receive a PhD from your country. Now you are going to receive a PhD from the PhD countries. A higher level that the Lord wants to take you. But you are not ready to humble yourself. Nobody comes to America here. If you are a medical doctor in your country, you come here, you have to go through their courses and pass the board. But if they, they, they are starting you, they say, we want to see your level of English. They say, ah, how can they give me the ESL type of English? These people are insulting me. Hey, please, don't be chatting. Just go. Go, accept the fact. Go through it and pass it. Then you are ready for the next step. But if you are sitting down there and said, oh, taxi is not my thing. How can I come with, in America and start with a taxi? The people that are driving the taxi, you are not higher than them. It is just in your mind. Somebody is greater than you and he is still using that means. Because why? The Lord is taking him through his school. The next thing you know, as you have been sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting, yeah, yes, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are glued to the chair. Your life is not moving forth. Complaining and complaining. You are going to kill somebody's daughter. 
Thank you, Lord. Pride. Let's talk about the last one. Which is faith brings obedience to God. Number one, faith is confidence in God. Faith is dependence upon God. And faith brings obedience to God. Romans 1 and the verse is 5. He said, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. For what purpose? For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. You see that? We have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. For obedience to the faith. So, you see, the point, the people of the Old Testament, all that they knew, it was obedience of fear, lest God punish them. Obedience. If I don't obey this word of God, the Lord is going to punish me. That was the people of Old Testament. So a lot of hypocrisy. It's like they were, they, they, you know, they, they are not willing to do it, but because of the punishment, let me go ahead and do it. So they were doing these things for rewards. For rewards. If I do this, the Lord will bless me. If I don't do this, I am going to receive curses. Then since I want to be rewarded, I better do this one. That was obedience in fear. In fear. They were not doing things from within. It's not something that, this is something that I really, I really want to do to please my God. I have faith. You know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want to do this to please my God. This is something that is being proceeded from within. Not because of the blessings. If I do this, God will bless me. So then let me do this. Don't, then, 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 then let me do this. No. But in the case of children of God, it is something that is from with, within. We do everything God tells us to do because we know that whatever that the Lord tells us to do, it is for our good. That is a different mindset. It is not because of the reward. But I do know that the word of God is meant for my good. I come to God in faith because I know that God is God. And knowing God as my father, not the policeman as the people of the Old Testament knew him. But my father, who is, you know, had planned it all onto my good. So whatever that I do, or whatever that he tells me to do, that I do. I am not doing this in the fear of what he's going to do to me if I don't do it. But I am doing this, you know, in the reverential fear. The fear that a child should have for his father. In the sense that whatsoever that daddy tells me to do, it is going to turn to my own good. Even if it might seem like something that is not you know, uh, 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 obvious. You might see it as something that is, that is just, why the Lord would ask me to do such a thing? It doesn't seem like there is a benefit coming to me in this thing. Believe me, God who spoke it, he knows what he is doing. What he puts you in there, it is for you to be doing it and the Lord is shutting the mouth of your enemies. When they will see you going through that situation, they said, we have finished him. They don't know that these are the stepping stones for you to come up higher. A group of people decided that this time we are going to kill this donkey that has been causing us a lot of problems. And they dig a hole and they put the donkey in there. And they started shoveling dust to cover, bury the donkey. And every time that they would throw the dust, 
the soil into the donkey in the pit. The donkey will shake itself and step up. And they continue. More, he will be shaken and step up. More, he will be shaken and step up. So as they continue feeling, thinking that they are burying the donkey, the next thing they knew is that the donkey was already up and said, hey, bye-bye. So whatever that the enemy is doing, by the time that they were throwing the dirt on you and all that, God said, no, don't worry, just shake yourself. My son, don't worry, just shake yourself. Take it easy. Don't pay attention to them. Don't play their gossip. Don't do this. Don't, uh, my, 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 follow, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I cannot put you to shame. And the Lord is strengthening you. And you keep coming. And we are preaching the word. Say, so God will protect you. The resources of the Lord, they are here and amen. Promises of God, they are here and amen. God who spoke to you, it shall surely come to pass. We continue giving you that word of encouragement. No matter how long it takes. You shall surely come out unto the fulfillment of the living God's word in the name of Jesus Christ. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Whatever that God tells me to do, it is for my good. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and the verses 10 and 11. Sometimes the enemy just wants us to be remaining in the pit. By throwing so much dust on us. And we are caught into their craftiness. So he said, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Hallelujah. Now you watch this scripture. What the enemy wants you to do is that when some, someone has done something to you, that you keep it in your heart. What you have done to me, I will never forget it. And I will never forgive you. You know what it means? Satan wants, he wants you to stand at the same spot. Because according to this word, he said, if you forgive someone, I the Lord also forgive you. You forget. So, if you are holding something against somebody who is on the bandage, you. If someone has done something wrong to you and you free the person, you see, who is moving forth? You. So God said it. He said, as you do it unto them, remember, it is something that is bouncing to your own account. Release them. They came to Jesus. They said, Jesus, this woman has committed fornication. According to the law of Moses, this woman, she must be stoned. What do you say? The Lord started writing on the ground. Say, Jesus, how are you? why are you writing on the ground? There is already a written word from Moses. They want to trap Jesus. Jesus lifted up his eyes. He said, <laughs> If anyone is here who had never sinned, please let that person be the first person to cast the stone to this woman. Kill her. And right there in their surrounding, they started dropping the stones. They, hey, we as children of God, we are not to have stones in our pockets against nobody. We are not. All of them were having stones in their pockets ready to kill this woman. There was only one man who did not have any stone. As everybody dropped the stone and left. They have to go. You know why? Because they knew who Jesus was. This is the coming. He said, you know, it was the coming of the prophetic ministry of Jesus. What you have done in your chamber, Christ knows it. So if you were there, you dare to stand forth and say that, you know what, I'm clean. I'm going to stone you and finish you. Jesus said, oh, hold on, since you said you were clean, let me tell you. You know, yesterday, do you remember, road, Pondell, uh -huh, by the apartment 507. You remember, sister, so, so, and so, uh -huh, what you were doing. He said, but that, ma that girl, she's the brother, uh -huh, brother, bro 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 brother, uh -huh. oh, you are here, you are here. Uh, that, that is your wife, uh -huh. this man. He will tell your secret. So they dropped the stones. And they left. 
Jesus has no condemnation upon nobody. Jesus doesn't condemn you. The heart that is, has come into repentance, no matter what you have done, if you only decide that this time, I'm just going to look unto Jesus Christ, the Lord who has no stone against my life, the Lord who will not, you know, bring any form of shame, God who had a promise, whatever that the enemy has done to my life, it doesn't matter anymore because now the word of the living God, the word of promise has come to me. Salvation has come to my door. I am going to open this Jesus and I'm accepting him as my Lord and my Savior. And whatsoever that the Lord has spoken over my life, whatever that the enemy has done, it is over now. I am now heading to the direction of Christ. It shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. It is for our good. But the enemy wants you to keep on holding grudges against your husband. I will never forgive him. I will ne- that is why you are miserable. I will never. What you have done to me, I will never forgive you. I will never. No, 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 no. It is, it is a weapon of the enemy. There is a message that I preached. It's still on the web. He says, unforgiveness is a satanic weapon. Because you come to find out that what they have done, Satan is the one that probably used this one or empowered that person to even come and do whatever that they did to you. Just because he tried so many times to get you and he couldn't. So he passed by your mother. He passed by your father. He passed by a sibling. He passed through you know, a relation. To what? To snare your life. Because how can a brother do this to me? Even somebody from outside cannot do such a thing to me. So how can a brother? And he said, I'm not going to forgive him forever. Your life is going to be snailed forever. That is what Satan wants. Free him. Release him. May the Lord give somebody grace to release anyone that you have in captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Second Peter 3. And the verse is 8. He said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Hallelujah. And a thousand years as one day. Don't be covetous. Don't think that it is too late for you. Don't see what they have been doing and he said, oh yeah, we all came together in this year. So we came in 19 and then you were mentioning, look at this one. He had already built this. He had already done that. He had already, hey, the Lord is telling you that for you, it is different. For you, it is different. What you have been going through and thinking that, Lord, enough is enough. All these things is too much on me. The Lord said that my daughter, my son, don't worry. Don't look onto their situations and start comparing yourself. Have faith in me, God. Because whatever that they have done throughout all this time, when I start with you, when I am finished with you and start with you, the years that the cankerworms and the locusts have been eaten, those years you shall see flourishment. You shall see. That they, 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 you know, you are already classified as someone who is just useless in America. Useless in America. You are not useless. You are at school. The Lord is preparing you for a higher height. The Lord is preparing you. He said the rejected stone, the cornerstone, the one that is the rejected stone has now become the cornerstone. So where they are thinking that the hope will be coming from, that's not you that they thought you would be nobody. Today, you are the one that is sending and feeding them. And the Lord is taking you higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Be patient with the Lord. And I'm closing just right here. We are talking about faith that brings obedience to God. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse is 21. Downwards, I'm going to read from 21 to 25. He says, After that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. You see that? The world by wisdom 
But it was the wisdom of God for the world not to know God. Read it well. After that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. God did it so. God made it so. He said, it pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. It pleased God by the foolishness. When the word of God came to you, the word of promise came to you, it seems like it is foolish. Oh God, look at me. 90 years man, Abraham, to bring forth not even a child. But you are saying I should count the stars that I'm going to have that many. Everything around me, I mean, what, I mean, be, be realistic. I know you are God, but this one is just like. The Lord said, he's the one behind it. He's the one behind it. God, in his wisdom, had made somebody close your case. They have written you off. It is the wisdom of God. They are not even looking on onto on your directions anymore. When they are calling the family members, oh, this one, the drunkard, leave him alone. Oh, that poor one, leave him alone. Oh, we are asking you to go and call people. This one is not among people. God did it so. God made it so. Oh, forget about that church goer. Everything about him is church, 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 church. He doesn't want to come to reality. Always tightening the scarf and uh, 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 so called. She's just entertaining herself as a woman of God. Oh. Leave her alone. But you keep coming and hearing the word of God. And the faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. And you are being increased in faith. And as you are being increased in faith, your God is working you. The Lord is working you out. And gradually, from faith, you are being led to glory. From glory to glory. Unto the living God's purpose. Foolish things. God will make them think something that is not right in your sight. So if you don't pay attention, something that your God is doing to promote you, you are just going to stand. Uh -huh. I thought you were my mother. I thought you were my mother. How can you do this to me? No. Let them continue. Let them continue throwing the dust on you. Let them continue afflicting you. Let them believe whatever that they want to believe. But you continue believing in, on your Jesus. Continue walking with Christ. It's just a matter of time. And we thank God. God himself is time. Hmm. So he said that this wisdom for the Jews I'm reading 1 Corinthians 1 22 for the Jews they required a sign they want to see and the Greeks they seek after wisdom. Uh -huh. They seek after wisdom. But we preach crucified. We, say we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. So you can see, the, 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 you know, the Jews, they are looking for signs. We have many that are living their lives today looking for signs. Looking for signs. So if they can see you that, oh, okay, uh -huh, this is the type of car he's driving. I mean, he's driving. And this is uh, what he, he has. Oh, okay, now, yeah, when we have the family meeting, call him. But if they see you, that you're always coming, uh, walking, and probably you have not even changed clothes for a while. You have been washing them, but you have not changed them. You wait at home until the cloth is dry before you go. So, oh, forget about him. They are looking for signs, and they are judging people according to signs. If they cannot identify their expectations in you, you are not counted as someone that is worthy. But, and the ones that are also, you know, seeking for the wisdom, he said unto the Greek, these things are stumbling blocks. They, they, they stumble at it, at it. They stumble at it because they look at it, they said, oh no, it doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense. Could you possibly believe that at the time that God called Noah to build the ark? And God spoke to Noah, Noah, build this ark. I am going to destroy the world. I'm going to destroy everything. Noah preached for 120 years, telling people, amend your ways. God is going to destroy this land. God is going to destroy this land. said, we are in the, pretty much in the desert here. What are you talking about? So you see Noah with his family carrying wood, carrying, making the ark. People will be seeing them. They said, what a foolish man. Have you seen the madman over there who is building the ark? It has become, the promise has become a stumbling block. Noah, his, his actions, obeying the word of the living God, had become some, so the signs that they want to see, you are, a, he has gone mental. He has gone mental. But the time, the time will prove itself. But when the time of the living God is yet, when the promise has come to fulfillment, God said, go in there, close the ark, don't open the window. I'm very sure that at that time, people were trusting in their houses. So they went to the top of the house and the water got there. Some were trusting in the big tree. They went on top of the trees, the water got there. Whatsoever that you'll be trusting in, it is going to fail. It is only in the word of the living God that would definitely bring someone onto expectation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You'll be facing all this. But we preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified. So, unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of Almighty God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Unto you that is called. Unto you that is called. The Christ that is being preached. It is your moment of salvation. It is your moment of fulfillment. The promises of God. They are yea and amen. In Christ Jesus. As far as you remain in Christ. And continue believing in the word of the living God. Everything that God said he's bringing to pass. It shall surely come to pass. Unto his glory. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you and bless you and bless you and bless you. Everyone is very welcome. And we thank God for your life. Day that we titled. From strength to strength. From strength to strength. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 84 and the verse 7, he said, They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Hallelujah. They go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord. So as you will go in, as you will, you will be going from strength to strength, there is an assurance that one day you will definitely make it before the presence of the living God with our Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father. How? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and the verses 18, he said, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the living God. So, you don't have to do much. All that you have to do is to make sure that you look unto the glory of the Lord. Looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith, automatically, there is something that comes out of the presence of the living God. And it will hit you. And as you receive the radiant glory of the Lord, you cannot be the same. It is impossible. You are gradually going to be changed. So the mindset is extremely important. Where you find yourself, it's very important. You have to make sure that what you are looking onto, it is not anything else but the glory of the living God. The glory of our Lord Jesus Christ.
He said, if only you can look onto that glory, there is no doubt transformation is going to come into your life. And gradually you are going to be changed. Say, we are changed to the same image. The image that you are seeing, the Jesus that you see. You are also going to be changed from glory to glory. Not by you, but by the spirit of the living God. It comes with power. That is how we grow from strength to strength. As we keep looking higher level, the Lord is just bringing forth. Do you know that God's glory is not something that is fixed? The Lord, he's, he said he takes us from one degree of glory to another. From one degree of glory to another. So as you are looking unto him, every time something new is being projected into your life, and gradually you are seeing that change. So, Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6.10, he said that, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The change is not without power. Because he said that the change to be at the same image as Christ, it is brought forth by the power of the Spirit. He said, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So it is the power of God that is going to bring forth that transformation in our lives. Anyone that wants to keep your life stagnant, it is impossible as you keep looking unto Jesus. Someone told me, I said, don't worry about your enemies. You worry about looking unto Jesus. And let Christ deal with them. There are too many. You don't know where they are. The, the dangerous ones are the ones that you don't even know. The ones that you are seeing them as loved ones, friends. But they are your enemies. The time is not yet to find out. So by the time that you are focused on the wrong direction, the Lord said, don't focus on those directions. You focus on me. And let me deal with everyone around you. This is it. That's the way. So we move from strength to strength. By fixing our eyes onto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. To God alone be the glory. We are talking about spiritual power here. We are talking about spiritual power. Not just carnal Christians. We come to church and we are living. And then at the moment that we are facing problems, we behave like any ordinary person. Like an unbeliever. But our lives are not the same. We used to be there in the world, but we have been translated into the kingdom of light. By power. By power. So we dwell in that power and we, we continue running our lives in that power. In that power. We don't act the same way when we are going through problems as they do. That is the reason why what kills them when it comes on you, it's only going to strengthen you. Because it is meant to promote you to another level. In only one condition that you tap into the power, the source where you are, you stand as a Christian and apply the principles as a Christian, then you will see the change. It's a matter of time, but definitely the change will come. Don't be distracted because it is coming from you looking onto that Jesus. Beholding him as in a glass. Beholding him as in a glass. You see, the point is this, right? You know, as you are looking into a glass, it is your own image that is being projected from that glass. But in this case, it is the image of Christ that you see. Such a wonderful thing. It is the image of Christ, Jesus Christ, that you see. And you cannot see Jesus and remain the same. This is where the issue is. You can never see Jesus. Everybody who has come across Christ, his life is never and can never be the same. Impossible. Impossible. You can't have an encounter with God and remain the same. You were harassing my life, but now I have seen Jesus. It is over. You meant to kill me, but now I have seen Jesus. You cannot kill me anymore. So we said we are talking about spiritual power. Then what is spiritual power? Spiritual power, it is 
the ability to overcome any negative power that is working against you. It is the ability to exercise dominion. Spiritual power. When we say we have power, power surpasses power. Don't think that they do not have power. The one that is coming to hurt you is coming in power because he knows that you go to church. But he wants to know how much do you take your church serious? How do you stand as a Christian? But if you are living a life of dominion, they will come and face power. But if you are just a carnal Christian that is, uh, you know, moving around and doing your own thing for people to know that you come to church, they will get you. They will get you because when they come, they are coming with power, but they come and there is no confrontation. There is no confrontation. You come to church, you hold no power. But that is not, he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things, they are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. In other words, what they used to know of you, you are no more the same person. You are no more. And you have to testify of yourself that you are no more the same. Before they could toss you around on the bed and you know all kinds of noises, dream, throwing in banana on you and all kinds of things. But the situation has been changed. Now when you are sleeping, an angel of the living God is on your back. It's just by your side. They will come and they will come to find out that the room is full of light. That they are of the darkness. They cannot mingle with light. And they, they are leaving you alone. It's not like they didn't come. They came, but they could not perform. This is what we are talking about here. He said now, Romans 8.1. He said now there is no condemnation in them that are in Christ Jesus. You see that? There is no condemnation. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so in other words, you would just say that, uh, you, you know, what you used to be, and uh, I used to be, no, no, you said you used to be that. Christ is not seeing you that way anymore. And I said this, but don't stop just right here. He said, therefore, there is no condemnation in them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see that? So in other words, you can be walking in Christ with condemnation. Because your deeds are carnal. You are walking by the flesh. And the flesh is the people of the world. You just name it. Anything that the enemy is throwing out there, it is all the works of the flesh. But we are not called unto the works of the flesh. We are called to bring forth fruits and spiritual fruits. Spiritual fruit. So let them come. They used to know you. You are now in Christ. They come. They are expecting to see you as they used to know you. But you are no more the same because your status has been changed. Your master has been changed. Where your expectations are, it has been changed. What you look, the one that you are expecting from Jesus Christ, it has been changed. You are not, you, you know, to expect anything from the world anymore. You are not my provider. Therefore, you cannot be the decision maker of my life. Thank you, my Lord. It comes with that power. This power is not something that you'll be moving around and say that now I'm a child of God. Uh, I have power. It is not about what you say. It is about who you are. You know, Romans 6.14, he talks about, he says, sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law. You are under grace. So, a child of grace is a child of power. Sin shall not have dominion over you. We said that spiritual power is when you can exercise dominion over any power that confronts you. So whatever that is coming, it is inferior to your power. But if you are moving around entertaining sin in your life and telling yourself that I'm a church goer, I'm a child of God, I go to church and you are even boasting of your church. It is not about that because you do know that you are not right standing and the enemy will get you. The only way that the enemy will rule over you is when you are entertaining sin. Because he says sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not. But this is what the Lord said. But if you make yourself available for sin, sin will definitely have dominion over you. But if you are now understanding that the one that you are looking on to be holding him in that glass 
his glory. You are attained to the same image. You are attained to that power. Jesus, he is the source of power. Custodian of power. There is no power but it's of God. That is him. So all things consist in Christ. This is what we are talking about here. So it is not about them. And be focusing, oh, and this one, that what my enemies are going to do. And what my enemies are going to do. What is that that your enemies are going to do? You focus on Christ and be thinking of what Christ is going to do to your enemies. It changes everything. Not by your power, but by the spirit of almighty God. By the spirit of God. There is a scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and the verses 1 to 2. He said, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. I love this. You see, the word ministry here, don't see it as just a church type of work only. We are talking about life. You are here because God puts you here in life. So he said that we have received mercy, forgiveness of God, because we have been cleansed. Adamic nature is not holding it, nobody. Whatever that you did in your life before coming to Christ, Christ had already wiped it out. It is now your responsibility to, to live a new life and bring forth a new man on a higher level that he may take absolute control over the, 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 the man as you know. That is the flesh. So he said, that in order for you to recognize that indeed you are moving from strength to strength, you have to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. You can't deceive no one. You cannot deceive no one. Because the point is this. When you come and you lie to somebody about your state, what is it that is going to do to the person? You, okay, you told the person a lie. But you are the one that is suffering. You are the one that is suffering. So the Lord said that you're going to have to look into your own life and renounce the dishonesty. Any area of your life that is not pleasing God, you know that it is against the word of the living God. You are moving around, you know, showing people who you are not. Telling them who you are not. What benefit it is for them. They have graded you so high, but Within yourself, you know that you are not there. And you are the only one. Now, because of that, every time that you are going to say something, eh, you look around, you see if uh, one of those people that you talk to, you lie to, it's not there. You are not yourself, disturbed. You can't reason well. You are moving around, always looking, looking back. You are not yourself. Moving from strength to strength, in it hidden thing. The hidden things of dishonesty. We renounce them and not walking in craftiness. That is what we just said. Not walking in craftiness. So you are being smart with people. Craftiness. You are being smart. Why are you doing this to yourself? You are not what you say you are. And what, what benefit is it bringing to, to, to someone? Everything that you are sowing, it is for yourself. So why are you portraying, moving around and you know, telling people, oh, my father is like this, my mother is like this. Or what about yourself? How are you? What is it? What is your achievement? What is it that you can boast of? I mean, I, 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 is it the, the, the worldly things? That, that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about character. Matter of fact, right now you are displaying one. You are displaying one. We renounce those things. We don't walk in craftiness. No handling the word of God in deceitfulness. That's what we said. Not handling the word of God in deceitfulness. So the word is preached. How was the message today? Oh, today church was wonderful. Church was wonderful. It was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Ah, there is something that makes me come into the news. You have forgotten the message. You have forgotten the message. You have forgotten the message. The person said, uh, I mean, what was, the way they wanted to hear something that you kept. It was the, only the music. That is exactly what the devil wants you to hear. 
So your church going is nothing. You handle the word of God in deceitfulness. You are going to use the word only when it suits your case. Uh -huh. Even the word of God says that you, my husband, you should submit yourself to me. You should submit yourself to me. Meanwhile, you are the one that is standing there on your high heels. Submit yourself. Submit yourself. What about you going down? It says submitting to one another. You, you, you will be using the word when it fits your situation. He said, it's not like that, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. This is powerful. You know what this means? He's simply saying that it's not about what you tell people, but let your own conscience, let your conscience work for you. You sit down. Think about your life. Sit down. One day or another, all these things that you have been telling people of who you are, it's not going to be matter anymore. You will come to find out that you are what you see. You are just what you see. So he said, it is better for you to be sitting down and just start thinking of yourself and do the right thing in the sight of God. Do the right thing in the sight of God. Moving around, uh, I'm a pastor. Uh -huh. And what's wrong with you? But your life, your life at home is not. You see, it is not. It is only when you come to the public that you just want to, you want recognition. You want recognition, but God is not recognizing your inner life. Why are you deceiving yourself? What is all these things for? Everyone is minding his business anyway. You don't pay their bills. So you bring it yourself so up and so what? Sit down and assess your life and make a change. This is what the Lord God is talking about. So it's not a time of being deceived. The enemy is also working. So more truthful you are to yourself, greater power. You can stand in. There is a, a scripture here. We're gonna let's let's read this together in the book of Matthew, Matthew 13. Let's read first of all, verse 24 to 25. My question here is: are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? This is what the word says. He said, Jesus Christ put forth a parable and he said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and saw towers among the wheat and went his way. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. A good man thinking of life and being focused. He wasn't sleeping. He wanted to live. And he was living his life. So he went and sowed good seed. And by the time that he left sleeping, the enemy also came in. And what he did, he didn't take out what he sowed. All he did, he also planted on the same field. You went there, you planted good things. Enemy also, if he comes around and take what you have planted, you will come around and find that, say, oh, this is what the enemy has done. No, no, no. no, he said, okay, don't worry. I am also planting. We are all in the same boat. Let's see. He came and he planted and he went away. You know, if the man was watching, the enemy wouldn't have been access, I mean, accessing that, that field and come and plant whatever that he wanted to plant. The book of Proverbs tells us that, Proverbs 6, 4 and 5, he said, Give not sleep to thy eyes, 
No slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a birth from the hand of the fowler. So, you see that the work of the enemy, it is, it is the work of the enemy. It is Satan's responsibility to be moving around and be planting evil in people's life. And it is a child of God's responsibility to understand that the enemy's responsibility is to be moving around and sowing evil. So then what? Then you want to make sure that your field is not containing any evil seed from the devil. So what do you do? You watch. You prevent the enemy from coming to that field. So that is why the Lord said, have your eyes open. Watch your lives. Matter of fact, he's going to explain the whole parable. He said that the field is the world. As you are here, this is your life. Your life is not somebody's life. You are the only one that is going to give, give account of how you live here. So you better watch that no one comes around and plant any garbage in your life. You have to watch. Oh, it is my brother that did this to me. It is my mother that did this to me. My own people, my own people. May the Lord forgive you. Have understanding that there is a principle to live. You want to live, you have to fight. You want to live here, you have to fight. Because Jesus in John 17, he said that we are in the world, but we are not from here. We are not from here. So if you want to tabernacle, you know, in this place, there, something has definitely gone wrong. You don't know where you are. You don't know that you are in the battlefield. You have to watch. You can't blame people for what they have done to you. You have to blame yourself for allowing them to do these things to you. If they kill you, you are the only one that is dying. If they come and you allow yourself to be killed, you are the only one that is dying. You are going alone. Go stand before Jesus Christ and tell Jesus, Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus will ask you, say, oh, my, my son, my daughter, why are you here so soon? Say, Lord, my auntie, yeah, witch, witch, oh God, she killed me. Jesus said, ah, your auntie killed you. Your auntie was a witch. I see. I see. You allow yourself to be killed, killed by witch. Then what is my power in you? You are not, so let me see. Ah, I can tell you don't have anything of me. They are there. Those that do not belong to me. They are there. Join them. But Lord, they are crying over there. I said, don't go. Don't, don't worry. Since you are here early, your, cry, your, your tears will be even harder. Go. You will definitely reap every single mistake that you allow people to come and perform in your life. You have to watch your life. It is your life. Not this. They love making their ways and they love having their ways. E even if they have to walk over your head. If your life has to be sacrificed for them, they don't care. But what about you? What about you? Don't come and complain before God and say that this is what the, the enemy has done. God tells you that you watch your life. You watch. Anything that you are sowing, you have to watch it and be seeing it growing to yield forth unto you. It is not finished. In Matthew 13, 26 to 27. You know, in the morning, he said, when the blade sprang up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the towers also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto the master, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in, my, in thy field? From whence then had it the task? I was with you. We came in. I saw what you saw. What you sowed was not evil seed. But I see that this are not, these things are not right. This is not how God was expecting to see your life coming out. What is this thing here? What is this man that is causing so much problems? What is this woman that is causing so much problem? What is it that you have gone and take that is not bringing any glory to me? You are missing all my purpose, all my assignment in your life. 
What is going on? Always crying and crying and crying. Like if I have not done it all for you. Jesus, my son, has been sacrificed. The name has been given to you to use it. Under any circumstance of need. Not just that. I have also been giving you the blood. To mark thy doorpost. He said that death will see it and he will pass you by. Because you are the one that has been sanctified by, by that blood. I have given you the Holy Spirit to lead you in my ways. What is it that you are coming here for? Why are you crying? We are moving from strength to strength. Understand the principle. Why all these problems now? Where are they coming from? Now listen to what the master said. In Matthew 7. And the verses 18 to 20. You know, Matthew 7, 18 to 20 is just, you know, if you sow, we are expecting uh, according to what we have sown. <laughs> so it's a scripture to just come and empower what your expectations, you know, should be. You are living good life. The Lord meant to take you from another level, from one level to another, in a higher height. And you have to expect it. Because he said that a good tree cannot bring forth an evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is weaned down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, he's, yeah, wherefore, by their fruit, we shall know them. So according to this scripture, it is to tell you that what you sow, you're supposed to reap. And reaping your expectation. Not something else. So, Something definitely has gone wrong in this case. 